All right, welcome to the Set the Stage podcast. We're here with, uh, should we use, call you Alfie or should we go yeah. with it? We'll have Alfie from Drop yeah, Dead yeah. McPhee. Yeah. Yeah, Alfie. you heard that right, Drop Dead McPhee. Oh yeah, sorry, I probably speak too fast for pronouncing names. <laughs> I think I should maybe leave the... Well, you are the, from uh, Bristol. Bristol. Well, Bristol. I think I'll leave the uh, announcements up to you from now on. I'll just... I'll try. Attempt to be quiet. So, welcome Alfie. How are you doing? Yeah, all right, all right. Cheers yeah. for having me. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. welcome. Well, I'm looking Thanks forward for to uh, hearing you on the centre stage. Yeah, it should be good. It should yeah. be good. You've already sent us some links, haven't you? Of, um... Yeah, I think I've probably sent you some stuff on, um, I think it's a Wii transfer, because files are just always too big. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the Wii there. transfer? I thought you'd sent me a couple of YouTube links. It might have been, yeah. But I've kind of cleaned up the YouTube, really. Cause the... Hmm. So I started that absentmindedly, December 2019 I, I wrote a Christmas song okay um, and and put it out just that and I thought oh I'll fill it up over 2020 and then <laughs> we all know what happened in 2020 <laughs> yeah so and although I was writing a lot in the pandemic I was kind of just thinking well I don't want to put anything out yet I want to kind of you know just kind of see where this goes um, and then yeah, I kind of went back to so I was at uni in Manchester in 2019 Oh, yeah, um, what were you studying? I was studying at BIM, um, which is the music uni there, doing mm -hmm. music production. Cool. And I kind of, I mean, well, it wasn't though. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> the idea's cool. You have the same, probably the same story. Yeah, well, I went, I kind of panicked when I was picking unis and I thought, all oh, right, okay, well, I need to do something music related because if not, like, how am I going to get my foot in the door? I want to be in Manchester and like, what am I, how am I going to get there? And mm. Which is really out of character for me because I'm self-taught. I don't mm. buy into that you've got mm. to go and learn any of it because you don't mm. look yeah, at no, you know no. look at the Beatles. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. To name the biggest example yeah. you can, but but Paul McCartney can't read music, and no, it's like I well, read yeah. music. You know, no, Dave Grohl can't do it. It's like no. who cares? So yeah, exactly. Just yeah. Do your thing. But I panicked and I went anyway and um, didn't love it. And then COVID kind of happened. I came home and thought about changing courses and I went back and did a year doing music journalism because I thought well I, I like writing and I, I really like kind of talking and writing about <laughs> music I like so that's going to be a great podcast yeah yeah so I thought okay I'll do that and it'll be better and it, it was but it still wasn't really I knew it wasn't really the right thing for me so but whilst I was there I got a band together and we wrote and and worked on some tunes and COVID and personal life stuff got in the way of us it tends to be. carrying it on so i came home in 2021 and took a year out worked worked on new music and started up the youtube thing again putting stuff on there um put in all sorts of stuff like really old demos and stuff like that stuff mm. that isn't perfect but <clears throat> i was kind of inspired by um at the same time, so it was it was twenty twenty one. It's coming up to Boy George being sixty, and he wow. was putting out sixty songs for his sixtieth birthday. And I thought, mm. I quite like the fact he's just chucking them out. Mm. Yeah, Taylor Swift had just done it with two albums, and I thought, I quite like that. I like that approach. Like if if someone of a certain stature is cool doing that, then why am I guarding these demos? Like, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, no yeah. one cares. They're just chucking. I think them out. it's that yeah. musician thing. Like, we're all very precious about what we put out, and yeah. We hear the, especially when doing production, because you hear those songs over and over and over again, right? So yeah. you hear every single little thing, and like ninety-five percent of the people listening to the songs won't even notice. Like, yeah. you know, just go buy them; they wouldn't even notice there was a mistake there. You know? I think, yeah, it's not even mistakes. It's, it's yeah, but it's not. It doesn't it's, have to be. It's not no. like blatant. It's just little yeah. things, and you're like, ah, that really fuck yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah, and it's and it's kind of oversaturation and overhearing something, and it's like mm. something that. The one thing actually that did stick with me from BIM is uh, a lecturer saying, make sure you take breaks from listening to stuff because your ears get tired. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's yeah. true. Mm. And I, that's mm -hmm. my, for anyone going to BIM, don't go. I've given you all you need. That Just that one bit of advice. <laughs> <One> <laughs> of advice yeah. Um, but I, yeah, so I started the YouTube thing up again and started chucking stuff on there no matter what it was. And I enjoyed doing that. But then in the last couple of months, I've kind of gone back and thought, well, what I do now has not a big audience at all but there's the aim that there's going to be a big audience there's the aim that people are going to care and listen and mm. and stuff like that so i kind of want to take down stuff that i'm not 100 percent happy with and maybe stuff that doesn't do the song justice you know what mm -hmm. i mean like that's the, the thing like the songs on there that i'm really proud of and love but now that 
I'm more aware of kind of what suits me best vocally and, and as a guitarist and stuff like that I can do them better now so why mm. would you want a Dodge version up but yeah. to answer your question I did send you some YouTube stuff that's what that's brilliant yeah. that's what we um, that's a good rant that's, that's, that's what it. I looked at and I said to Rich yeah what do you think of this and you know that's what yeah. we were just like yeah let's get him on yeah. Um, just just rewinding back you like to it? your your BIM cars. Mm. What was it about? Because I, I went uh, many years back. I lived in London for a few years. Yeah. And I went to, uh, I, was, I was working full time and I was doing this music production course part, ta part time. Right. And I knew it wasn't going to be all about, you know, twiddling a few buttons and that and that was it. It was just <clears throat> because we did a hell of a lot of um, like classroom work first before we yeah. even, I never even got into the studio because I, I jacked it in halfway through and I didn't even actually get into the practical side of things right. because it would just, it just bored the shit out of me. Yeah. Was it, was it something similar I mean, now or was it For other me, things? I went to Manchester just after reading Johnny Marr's book and I thought, okay, this is going to be just like that. It's going <laughs> to be really easy to find a bass player find a drummer find Morrissey find, find <laughs> Morrissey uh, find people that, that are as dedicated and as yes. into their shit as I yeah. as I am and people that you know there aren't so I guess I went with rose tinted sort of glasses on really thinking it was mm. going to be so easy to find really creative people and it was mm. all going to be about being creative the love mm. of being creative mm. rather than the reality which I think especially at BIM, it, it feels a bit more corporate and a bit more... Mm. Um, it's like you have to do things in a certain way, don't exactly you? That's exactly it, yeah. And Bureaucratic. A little bit, and it's just, I guess, kind of going there and being around musos, people that are, you know, learned in what they do, and that's not to do them down, but it just isn't me, and it's mm. not the kind of people that, that I can relate to. So mm. I, I guess it kind of... I wouldn't say put my back up, but it was just, it made me very aware of the fact that, as I say, I'm self-taught. I kind of don't really know what some of the chords are that I'm playing, but I, I know how, how to do my mm. thing. And when you're around people that are really kind of on it, and they are, they are kind of, um, they've taken lessons, and they can say, "Hey, well, that's a diminished twenty-four. Mm. It's like, <laughs> I don't care that that's a diminished mm. twenty-four. Mm. I just care that it's decent and it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, and, and you like it. Yeah, and. It was that side of it that I didn't like. The actual lectures weren't that dreadful. Like mm, some of them okay. were better than others. The ones where we were actually in the studio, engineering, doing stuff, they were great because it was a little bit like doing the real thing, mm. and you got to meet musicians that wanted you to record yeah. their stuff. But and the guy that um, I had for the um, the main kind of module we had to do, where it was studio engineering, was a guy called Marco who. Uh, was an Italian engineer and he'd worked with um, loads of artists, but the one that was on my radar that he'd worked with, he'd, he'd done the first three Stereophonics albums. Mm -hmm. and first three albums are great. Yeah, and and as are the last five. Um, Don't agree with you there, but the first two are great. No, the last five, man. No, man. Yes. The, first, the first two are amazing. Uh, the first two, yeah, the first two are, but he, and he, uh, he basically said the same thing. And um, <laughs> as he would, he not? and and uh, so that was cool. Got to have some cool chats with him about that and what that was like. But yeah, other than that one module, it was all quite sit down classroom. Mm. Mm. Here's how you do this. Here's how mm. you do that. And it's like I get, I get that there has to be some part of that because if not, why build your university around it? Yeah, you're you doing know? a degree yeah. Yeah. if you can't teach. But at yeah. the same time, just for me personally, it, it felt a little bit like yeah, but. I don't think David Bowie sat down and no. worked any of this shit out. Do you know what I mean? I think there's a difference between, like, we've done both of our... Let's go back further. The reason we got together in the first place as a band yeah, was because I kind of, like, got into, like, mixing and stuff a little bit, mm. like, um, after I finished singing in choirs and stuff. And okay. just, just free shit online, you know? And I had, I had some songs when I was a kid on guitar when I was in a duo and I kind of revamped yeah. them and started recording somehow okay. me and Dodgy got hooked up by a friend and then w I, we started doing some crazy shit like just like techno dance shit and okay yeah and uh fucking um 
just started getting together, yeah, 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 you know, just in the studio and yeah. just kind and, of just um, bouncing and just coming out with ideas. Yeah, and, and then the, but we <clears> learned and we did both of our albums. We just did it ourselves by just trial and error, like yeah. just working it out. YouTube, yeah, that, YouTube, you know, videos. Yeah. YouTube that, videos, YouTube videos, Google. Thing, you, we just did yeah. it, you know. We just you, dived in, learning as you do it as well, yeah. like rolling your sleeves up and yeah. seeing if you can do it. And by the end, yeah. you kind of can. I'll, I'll, you sort of make mistakes, and then yeah. you know when you went when we obviously we came back round to that we came round to the second album, it was. Would would put them previous mistakes, you know, but like you were put them um, on. like uh, Alfie was saying earlier, like uh, there is that because with each album we I think they both of them were mixed and remixed three times because by the time yeah. we'd got to the last song we'd got that much better at mixing and knowing what things yeah. are we were like that song sounds way better than the first song so we'd start yeah. again. And then we go back and we change that one. And it just kept yeah. going, this process yeah, of just like just, getting better. Yeah, never an circle. Like, of, yeah. At some point, we're like, they all sound all right. Let's get them sounding the same. We'll go over there. But um, mm. like you were saying earlier on about not putting a, like having a dot out there, you'd be like, you don't want six or seven to be great. And you have a three, like we can do yeah. better than that, you know? Yeah. And that's what happened with each album. Um, but it, and it is a pain in the ass. Like if you went to a studio and pay someone to do it for you, they could do you a great job. But there's something sweet and... You're in control yeah, of your own sound. Something, totally yeah. then. Sorry? Totally in control. We do everything. We write, we, yeah. we write, we record, we mix and we master. Yeah. We do it all ourselves. So we're in complete control of what we put out. Like yeah. no one else can take, we can't give anyone else any credit. There are people who sung on our albums and played guitar, which we give them credit for. Yeah. Like everyone else is us. Yeah. But that's yeah. the thing. If you can hear it in your head, why would you give that to somebody else I to try agree and 100%. make their version of? Mm. I, I would love to work with decent producers mm. and stuff like that and, and, and aim to and hope to and and all that but I'd want to be involved I don't oh, yeah. think I could just give it away yeah, some people can I'd have to come I could. here and do some all sit in the studio and make some stuff because I love yeah. I love people I love working with people yeah. like I like kind of helping to guide people and the, the, them having an input I love that yeah. you know? but um, what was I going to say uh, yeah the other reason why what you said uh, resonated a bit was earlier was when you said about meeting people who were as dedicated and stuff and one of the yeah. one of the big reasons that like me and Dudzi are together in the band still is because we both have the same kind of drive and outlook and dedication yeah. and we want to do it together and we want to we both have that similar sort of dedication so yeah you, you, it's, it's rare you meet those kind of people when you do you kind of yeah. like cling on to them you know yeah, just... man, totally totally and you, you and they don't always stay around but you you kind of know when you've got people like that and mm, even if it mm. doesn't come to this like i was saying about the guys i was with in manchester you know i mean out of the three guys not including myself you know i'm in contact with one of those guys um a guy called rory from belfast and um but the guitar player the lead guitar player we had a guy called julian he was one of those special people he was like a sort of john prashante type john squire like mm. art, really arty mm. and brilliant at what he did like a fucking genius on the guitar because it was coming from a real soulful mm. place inside him he was just an amazing dude and what's his name he's called julian shout out julian yeah wherever man you are. wherever you are julian shout out dude fucking reply to my messages <laughs> um, yes. yeah julian come on yeah. sort it <laughs> out alfie's texting you um, just ignoring him but not good enough but no he's, he's a total dude and um nice. You know, I kind of remember going around to his to write, and I so there's a there's a film that came out years ago called Sing Street, and it was based in Ireland, and it was these. these I know like, Street, it's great. Yeah, it's it great was, little film. That. Yeah, it was kind of like not based off, but you can imagine similar stories to like a young U two. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, they were yeah. like young guys getting it together, and especially the dynamic between the singer in that film and the guitar player. That's quite a Bono Edge dynamic, and. I went up to Julian's with a song from Sing Street in mind, like a slow kind of piano-y, acoustic-y thing. And some other things, this lyric I'd written. And I went to his and we kind of sat down and said, oh, you know, how you doing? All right, yeah. And he goes, I'm kind of in the mood to write something kind of, you know, kind of calm and, and beautiful tonight. And I thought, yes, so have I. Because <laughs> usually you kind of get there and it's like, oh, I've got this idea. It's like, yeah, so have I. And they fucking play you like a metal song. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know that's going to work. <laughs> but I, that night we, we wrote something that I have put out. And I, it was a, I don't really want to call it a single because it, it kind of wasn't. I didn't promote it like it was. It was just a Here's couple of tunes. Here's some things I've done. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and because they're old and they're demos and they're kind of scratchy and and um you know not polished i don't 
particularly think of that as a single to me to mm. me that's like here's just something i've done like you say yeah so i did a i put out the song that, that we wrote that night um we did a just before the christmas of 2020 we got together at his flat and um recorded a just a version of us rehearsing it it was a song called ships in the night and i fucking love that song and i love what he did on it and the other tune with it was a song called till the wheels and rory sent me a bass line and i sung over it and we kind of got this minute and a half thing together but they both had a quality that i loved and yeah when you meet those people those special people that love it and care about it as much as you do you it's the experience of being with those people as mm. much as anything else that that really matters so and you know when you're yeah. sort of like you've got that little bit of connection don't you yeah massively yeah 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 yeah. so <laughs> what um so what what sort of age were you when you shall i say first heard music or first started playing guitar which we'll go both let's go, uh, go let's, both, get, let's, so. go with the, let's go with the origins and go well, like what got you into music in the first place yeah. like do you remember like the first time you heard something that you were really like oh yeah was that yeah probably michael jackson but, nice. but not the music first i saw a, <laughs> a documentary no <laughs> <laughs> i uh, i uh, i was at my granny's house sorry, sorry everyone <laughs> I was at my granny's house oh. and um, it was before he died and um, it, it was sort of announcing that there's maybe he's going to play some shows kind of the rumors mm. going around is Michael Jackson going to start working again kind of thing and because he'd been out of the sort of touring line like for 10 years mm. and it was footage from like recent at the time recent stuff and I was like the fuck is that guy that guy looks different mm. and then from there they i think they must have played like the obligatory like thriller clip and i was like oh i like that because you kind of at that age that sort of pop music really gets you mm -hmm. yeah. so it will have been michael jackson and, and from there everything else but so i was probably about seven or eight at that point um but my parents played music around the house mainly my mum in the car would play music so like mm. she's a huge one jovi fan i'm not but um she's a huge fan got a of those. Of good tunes. yeah they've got a few good songs um and then, like, what else did she play? Like, Nancy Griffith, the country artist. She's got some fantastic songs. I think I know those. Um, I think she died a couple of years ago, but her oh, music's okay. brilliant. Um, Check her out. And uh, that kind of thing, really. A lot yeah. of just kind of listening in the car, yeah, mainly. Yeah. Just, kind of like, just from, from, from your mum, then, yeah? Yeah, mainly, yeah. Me and my dad sort of share music taste now, but only as I've got into guitar music and shown him things that he's kind yeah. of had a passing interest in mm -hmm. now he's really into yeah, yeah, yeah. so like the Foo Fighters for example are a good example of that kind of thing or even Stereophonics so yeah yeah, yeah. it's good uh, my Michael Jackson was one of the first things that I heard it was <clears> an old yeah. take but it must have been it must have been a gig that had been on TV from the <clears> 80s or something okay yeah and uh, my mum had recorded it on the VHS you know yeah. like how I used to do yeah Pass it from the TV and my mum used to record from the TV Oh god, yeah, the old BHS. Yeah. yeah, I was, I was, bit, I was massive into Michael Jackson in the eighties. Yeah, because I'm an old bastard. <laughs> so, um, so in in the in the eighties, watching the Beatles, buddy, didn't you? Uh, uh, I'm not sure if we ever had a mate. Oh, actually, we might have. Actually, to be fair, but sorry, I do remember um, when obviously there was this big thing about the album Thriller. Yeah, I think I think it's still classed as one of the biggest selling albums of all time. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. No, it is. Yeah. Um, I and I just remember when he released this vid the video to thrill it was like this 15 minute and it was it was something that hadn't really been done before mm. like making a a video for a song but making it into like this short 15 mm. minute film yeah and I just thought it was one of the best things ever yeah well he'd refer to his videos as short films all of them mm. all of them and I think it's kind of mad because you see artists like that you know for example like Taylor Swift now will do a long form video okay and all the kind of her fan base are kind of like oh my god this is oh, great it's this and that and they are good but it's like yeah, but you do know that that came from michael jackson right you do, like it's not down mm. to you know what i mean it's kind of odd seeing the way that it's kind of come back around in a way those mm. sort of videos which is odd because we live in a society that is fucking impatient and just wants <laughs> everything of, now yeah, and yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 literally but but uh, you know tiktok for example yeah yeah and scrolling and, and reels yeah, and stuff yeah, like that yeah. to do that and them still matter and still actually be part of your art form i think it's 
fucking really cool. I think we're if it like, works, it works, we're, yeah. yeah, if they work, yeah. If not, we're then. sort of just at the age, me, me, definitely you, where we don't obviously. No, I'm not. This isn't gonna be an insult. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, just the, just the, um, <laughs> just a little one. <laughs> just a little one. No, just that we, that we, we. I certainly remember music prior to the internet. Yeah. And I do. Like. It kind of almost feels like you need to be gimmicky these days to get noticed mm. in some way yeah. because of the way people view. There's so much stuff going out um, that I understand. I didn't really know anything about Taylor Swift. I, I, I've heard a few songs which I do not like. Yeah. Um, everyone always assures me she's great, but I've only heard the ones that are on the radio. Yeah. I'm like, no, do not like, you know. Yeah, so, no, I, so, I like her. I, like I do know that she seems very good at doing content, and she's. I saw her in a film called Amsterdam recently, which yeah. she, she was uh, great in. She didn't have a short bit, but she was really good in that scene. Cool. Um, so she's a clearly a talented person, but yeah. uh, she's definitely stealing from Michael Jackson. Yeah. Well, everybody has to have influence from oh, someone. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, I just want to do original. <laughs> not at all. Like, I got into writing my own songs when I was probably about 13, 14. And you how old are 21, did you say? Tw- yeah, I'd be 22 in June. 22. Um, but I, so was that like straight away on the guitar or just singing or how, uh, how both, did you go about really. it? Both, it's So I learned... So I got into properly got into guitar music via um seeing u2 on graham norton and they were promoting that album that went to everyone's phones oh, didn't yeah. go oh to was that phone. that freebie or something yeah, like that yeah yeah it didn't go to my phone and so i had to go out and buy it i was the only person in the fucking world that had to go out and buy it <laughs> i didn't play it either, well i think it annoyed the shit out of a lot of people it as well did, because yeah. it was just like hang on why the fuck yeah. have i got this in my yeah. library now how fucking it's, dare you it's yeah. free music but, but they didn't. I mean, I, I'm gonna stick up for you two because they're my favourite <laughs> band and they get a lot of stick. And it's like they I get, get it, I get it, I get it. But you know, for a start, that didn't mean to happen. That album on everyone's phones. They just they're gonna put it on the cloud, and it's like free album for a, a month. If you want it, great. If you don't, great. It went to everyone's phones. It was a glitch in the Apple tech, and Apple sorted it. Mm. And also, if you don't listen to it, don't listen to it, just delete it. Well, yeah, yeah, I agree. The, 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 the Sunday Bloody Sunday mm. song, is that an album as well? I don't know enough about you two. It was, it was on, an album called October, it was, was it? It was on War. War. The third album, yeah. Third album, yeah. I knew, I knew it was the third album, I can't what it was called. Um, that, I mean, that, that album and that song is great. Mm. And, it's a great album. A lot yeah. of the early stuff is, is good, but I did get... Like, very political, weren't they, in the, yeah. in the early days? I, yeah. It was yeah. interesting to see the switch from that to, like, pop music. You know, when they were doing, they did that song with Poison or whatever, um, and... So like, you're like, what's going on? Like they used to be like uh, Irish political yeah. band. Well, it's they, it's, it's no, an they, interesting they, thing. Yeah, they still are. If you, the, oh, I'm sure. There's an album they did in 1997, which is a really fucking underrated album called Pop. And they didn't finish writing and recording it because they booked the tour too soon to the making of the record and they had to go out and tour this album that they half finished. And But it makes it fresh. It, you put that record on and it's it pops no pun intended out of the <laughs> speakers in mm. a way that their other stuff does but not as much because it's too laboured on mm. but on that record there's loads of kind of socio-political things on there lyrically okay. and it's like dark li- if you read the lyrics and don't listen to the music it's like you kind of wonder what was going on with Bono at the time it's like yeah, yeah. really great dark interesting lyrics um, my problem with Bono and is, all the new stuff as well my problem with Bono is is that he's basically a billionaire yeah and that cannot there's no way that can't have an influence on how you write music i'm just it just can't no but but I mean, he just can't like no, you're no, not course. in the same thing and i'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing just that like but from I think, where he was to where he yeah. is now it's just an interesting change but it's but, interesting to hear his interviews nowadays compared to when vertigo came out because a lot of the people i know who don't like him grew up around the time of vertigo and all that stuff and you get a version of bono that's quite performative whereas now mm. You know, I've been listening to his interviews today from last year when his book came out, and he's very aware of his naysayers, and he's very aware of the image that people have of him, mm-hmm. and I think can have a bit of fun with it. And I think he feel he seems to feel more comfortable in he's himself. Got really, it's probably because he's got a billion dollars. Probably because he's got a lot of money. Fuck him. I don't care. They don't like me. Well, yeah. He's a rich bitch. I, I think somebody I mean? somebody finally showed him his bank balance. He's like, yeah. oh, 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 right. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, Josh, you did all right then, did he? But um, but no, I mean, you know, I got into guitar music because I saw you two on Graham Norton and um, 
really like they did an acoustic version of a song called Song for Someone. Um, I like that song. Tune. And um, it's on that record and, and I went and bought it and um, got really into them and I wanted to sort of have that guitar sound like The mm. Edge. And I had a little ukulele at the time you could plug into an amp. Oh, nice. So I was like, ukulele, delay all the way up. <laughs> it's, like, it's kind of cool, but it doesn't really kind of cut it. Yeah, because they do have that specific... The Edge does have that specific Hang kind on. of Hang sound, on. doesn't he? Hang on. It's just Edge. Oh, is it just Edge? Sorry. I'm and also... Politically incorrect here. It's not, no, it's not politically. He's just a stupid name. It's Mr. The Edge. Mr. The Edge. <laughs> he had a t-shirt in the 90s on the Pop Mart tour that said Mr. The Edge on it. Is it? I thought it was just Edge. And uh, Adam Clayton had one that said Pop Tart on. I quite like that. <laughs> Is it not just Edge? Or was it the um, Edge? I thought it Paul was McCartney that. calls him Edgy. I just like to know what his real name is. Dave Evans. David, I, I can't understand yeah. why he wanted to be called The Edge. Yeah. That's not a regular like name, is it? No. no. It's not it's a real rock But he does, he does have a specific sort of sound yeah. all yeah. through the U2 years yeah. I think Bill Bailey does a really good yeah, sketch of it um, <laughs> yeah. I love Bill Bailey um, where it goes yeah if you just want to sound like U2 you just oh, do this diddle, 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 diddle. Yeah. like we're sticking yeah. all that delay yeah. on and, and stuff. he takes it's... them all off and he's playing like three by mice yeah, yeah. 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 it sounds Bailey. like U2 but it sounds like Bill Bailey I've seen him I've seen him do a little spot at the um like some edinburgh castle thing 10 years ago there's like loads of people on like mm. culture club and fucking jesse j and then ed bill mm. bailey comes out he's got like bottle tops on stage playing the spoons on it um, yeah um so i got, yeah i started writing songs on the ukulele and then thought mm, i want a guitar saved up went into there was a great second hand shop that used to exist in in town uh in york for 60 odd years called bulmer's Oh, Bulmers, yeah. yeah I man. remember Bulmers. I bought my second ever guitar there. Yeah, it's wicked, man. The, the geese that used to run it was sort of like Bob Geldof, and it's like you go in and it's <laughs> like, there's like PlayStation stuff and records and all, and you go into the back and it's guitars, and then you go into the next room and it's keyboards and like four tracks. Wasn't there a downstairs like, section? There might have been. There was, there was So there was the main bit, then you go into the guitar part and then you go through another door and there'd be keyboards and stuff. There might have been a downstairs. For some reason, I'm know. thinking the guitar, the acoustic guitar section was, was kind of like down some stairs. I, don't, I literally went I in like three times. It's been a while. But, but it's, it sounds like a heaven place. It was. It was, it was a crack. It was, and it was just like you could get second band guitars there, brand new guitars. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, I bought my yeah. Sec, second ever guitar bonded. from there. It was wicked. So I got, I saved off and I went also, in. Also, sorry, go on. the word wicked, use like that. I, for, I used to use that all the time. I've forgotten what a great word it is. It's a great adjective. Or name, That's or coming word, back in your whatever. vocabulary now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, mental mode. Wicked. Um, I love it. But yeah, I went in and um, I saved up and I'd got like 80 quid or something. And I thought, oh, it'd be good to go and like, get a guitar. Because then like, this will make sense. It'll sound good. <laughs> and I went and I chose a, um, I seen this, um, on, on the wall it was a flying V yeah yeah baby and I thought I've got to get that it's like, <laughs> how old are you at this point? Uh, 13, 14 so yeah 13, 14 so yeah. like prime cool. flying V age. of course yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> of course so I went in I went in and got it down it was 160 and I thought being 30 I thought I'll barter this guy down 80 quid and he wasn't having it so I picked one that I picked a Les Paul copy in the end by Branko Ronko who uh I fucking love still and got it home this I didn't have a case just walked this <laughs> guitar home in the most like boiling hot day of all time wearing a hoodie like an idiot and <laughs> but felt so cool oh yeah guitar but, yeah. under my arm like yeah, yeah, yeah. This is happening now. so I went went home and, and got into playing that way um, and learned how to play a U2 song called So Cruel on the guitar and literally the minute I, I learned it I thought oh, I'll just nick some chords swap them around and write my own song and mm -hmm. um, and that was a, yeah then I wrote a tune called All I Can Do which is fucking dreadful and, um, <laughs> but got really into the fact that I could actually write something that mm. like had a, you know my own stamp on it so mm. that's how I got into writing songs and then I was in a band in high school called Eve and it was me and my mate Bill. Can't fucking get away from her, can we? <laughs> Sorry, there's this, there's this last one now. Um, okay. And so uh, like an yeah, she's just, she's just a wench. That's all. Anyway, <laughs> okay. carry on. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Eve. <laughs> Love you. So it was me and it was my mate Bill on um, keyboards and then later bass and our mate Margot on vocals. 
and I played guitar and we kind of got together for, for the first time at the start of 2016 just after Bowie had died and um, I'd never heard Margot sing so and Bill had a little bit so I was kind of like oh, I wonder what it sounded like and I had this half written song idea and finished the chorus off and recorded my part builded his we left the room because you don't want to be there when the singer's singing it's fucking horrible so she did a vocal and we kind of didn't really hear it because she had to go afterwards and and i played it back and genuinely like made me get quite emotional because it was like oh this is actually gonna be good then because she turned this song that i was kind of like this will do it was a song called where are we now into something that made me think oh this is actually genuinely good this is mm. this is kind of great this sounds like mm. the kind of thing i want to be writing and part of um so from and from that day i started writing great songs that i could be proud of because mm. i was writing to um you know with her voice in mind writing thinking okay well she's going to be able to sing that okay but i could i can't quite get this but she will so that's fine and it made me a better songwriter having to write for somebody who whose voice i really like so from yeah. there just a spiral of writing great songs and getting into those yeah. sort of songwriters as well like kelly jones and noel gallagher and people like that and johnny marr mm. so that's how that kind of started to snowball really the, the songwriting yeah, yeah. side of it it's good uh it's interesting writing songs for other people like uh one of the songs off our, our new album called cranberry I, I wrote it's like a grime trip hop type mix of a song um, yeah uh, our friend eve sang on it she sings folky type music yeah and uh, i i wrote and i, I had I, I wrote that tune like i was like i really want like her voice because it's like soft and quiet and folky to like clash with the the grind yeah mm. the grind yeah. bit i think it worked really really well yeah really she'd sung on like bass. other songs I've, I've, i'm doing an album for her as well so i can know what she sounds like so i was like i reckon it's like a, there's a different like it's a completely different skill yeah because like, you're not writing it for you you're no. writing it for someone else yeah you're writing so it, it is really mind, weird because yeah. you normally write like and you you'll do a few chords or sing a bit or get a melody and put it together mm. but what you didn't re- obviously i was singing a bit but i didn't know what it was going to sound like so yeah it's I a mean, really interesting it, thing to do it is and, it, and it, to be fair with with in my high school band it, it was kind of great because i it wasn't so much a case of i'd write it have an idea and she'd do a thing on it i'd write it that'd be the song and she'd sing it exactly as I would sing it to her. Oh, nice! But, but just lift, you know, just lift yeah, it no, a little bit, you know. And yeah. and so now when I play some of those songs that were written then, be it <clears throat> at gigs or uh, open mics or just around the house, I'll kind of do them similar, but maybe different key or a little bit different mm. or whatever, um, to suit my voice. But yeah, it's it, it can really to me it just really inspired me to to write more yeah, yeah. what and, do you do you write about anything in particular as um, in you know subject wise no, or is it really, just no. whatever comes to mind yeah usually genuinely whatever comes to mind if I'm just writing lyrics on their own it might just be more thought out it might be more kind of okay this not beforehand this is going to be about x y and z mm. but maybe after the first couple of lines it's like well this where's mm. this coming from oh, okay I yeah, get yeah, it yeah, yeah. but if it's just sitting with a guitar and noodling it is literally just whatever first line sticks. Mm. Um, there are certain songs that are about things, but but not. It's not a considered thing for me. It's interesting because I get a lot. I saw a lot of my, especially my more like kind of. Well, I don't want to be like ridiculous and say political, but stuff. Yeah. It's about political stuff. Yeah. Or social stuff. Let's say, mm. um, or more social commentaries. I get from like podcasts or whatever. Yeah. And I'll hear someone like Russell Brand talking about something mm. that the like you know world government are doing or some shit. And yeah. I'll just get he'll because he's so good at speaking. Yeah, man, like yeah. Um, you just hear certain lines. I'm like, did yeah. you know that sounds like? And it's when he's joking or something. I'm like, that's a great. I was bit doing of work, I was doing know? that today on the train down. Actually, I was listening to um, I said earlier um, old well not old but a couple of months old Bono interviews from when his book came out, and it was with uh, Chris Evans on Virgin Radio, whatever it was, and. Uh, in the book there's like pictures and stuff and there'll be handwriting that Bono's done around the pictures to sort of explain what's going on mm. and Chris Evans said to him your penmanship is very interesting because it, it like <laughs> it's like a hand that's being forced to write but wants to draw 
<laughs> because there were little pictures popping up out of the words. Oh, okay, right. And I loved that line. And it's quite a mm. Bono-esque line. Mm. So I thought, that's quite a good lyric. So I put it at the start <clears> of a, a lyric that I've not finished yet. But it was something like, um, the book's actually in the guitar bag, but um, something like a hand that's been, just stole that exact bit, a hand that's been forced to write, but longs to draw. Um, and I thought, yeah, I'm going to have that. Yeah, I'm going nice. to yeah, have yeah. that and, and see where I can do something with that. And also just reading stuff, picking up little phrases. There yeah, was definitely. a uh, again to mention you two again but there was a book that came out in the 90s about their zoo tv tour and the journalist on the road with them had captioned one of the photos a picture of him at a nightclub with edge and they were dancing and um maybe it was adam and um the caption was shaking out the aching <laughs> nice I fucking loved that I yeah, thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. got to use that one though it's, uh, things like that yeah it's great I mean, you should be able to get like I've said this before on the podcast, but I'll say it again. The way that Dudzy writes songs, I find yeah. just unbelievable because he, I, I'm old school. I like the Beatles. I like Elvis. I like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, yeah. middle, middle eight, chorus. If I'm feeling adventurous, I might put a bridge to the chorus. But okay, you know, yeah. by and large, I like patterns of songs. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I write melodies, so I like things that bounce, that are catchy, yeah. right? But I'm jealous of the way Dudzy can just write in streams and there's a story. Like a Dylan uh, type thing. Yeah, okay, almost yeah. like a Dylan type thing. I'm not mm. saying he's Dylan because that will get to his head and he'll get big headed. I don't want that. Not really. He's I ginger. Don't, I don't he needs sound... to stay in his place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he just write. <laughs> he just write about. But he writes about subjects that he sees. Mm. Or have ex- or have experienced. So, you yeah. know, kind of not nothing, nothing lovey dovey. Nothing like oh woe is me or anything like that. It's more it's real life. Sort of like, yeah, yeah, real life. Like, it's just like this. It's a song this. called, uh, it's going to be on our third album that we're, we're, we're just jamming out now. We're learning on the guitars as a duo, right? Called Sheep, and we've played it out a few times. It's a great song. Um, we put it together, we made it together, like, mm. but when he brought me the it's just literally Does He Saw Some Sheep. That's basically the story. I was walking through a field with my wife. the story. Yeah. Uh, and saw these sheep, and then there was this big fucking, big massive oak tree. Yeah. <clears throat> And around this oak tree, you could see where all the animals, the sheep and everything gathered when it pissed it down and stuff. Right, okay, yeah. So straight away, <laughs> um, I just thought of, oh, how did the sheep get here? And, all this, that. and then I thought, I'm going to write a story about an escape plan, mm. about two sheep getting together and yeah. trying to escape from, because obviously <laughs> they, they've got there, they've, 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 they've got taken there in like a, yeah. a, a big lorry or, or whatever. So... Um, so that's how it started, and, I'm, and we're walking through this field, and I just started writing the right, we wrote a couple of sentences on my phone, and then we got back to a, the camper van that we were hiring out for the week, or weekend or whatever it was, and then we'd be chilling out that night, and I'd just be like, da, 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 and then I'd sort of like add I'd, into I'd it throughout the got the on break, got yeah. onto it a bit further, and like <clears throat> so basically that was just us walking walking through a few fields, what, and that's, that's where it came from. What I like yeah. about it is the way it plays is that it it, it plays almost like a Romeo and Juliet-esque type thing because you don't know, mm. don't know it's about I know what it's about, I know what it was written as you know like I mm. knew what happened but like the way it's written it could be about anyone trying to get away from any situation it yeah. has like yeah. any meaning you want because you can sign to it I, yeah. I, I never use amazing. the word never use the word sheep or describe that Except it's from the title. about <laughs> sheep yeah. you know, but that's good because even with it being in the title I think people wouldn't it's. I think people will think, oh, okay, well, the lyric must have been the first thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The title must be some subversive thing. But yeah, yeah, exactly. The title yeah. is the truism. It's, it's like literally, yeah, it's, yeah. True. it's literally on the nose. You know, yeah. <laughs> what, so, but, well, yeah, we yeah. were thinking, but, uh, what, what we're going to call in it. itself is quite subversive, and, mm. and not we precisely. Yeah, 100%, so, yeah, yeah, do it, do it. But, um, but the, the point being is that, like, I don't think what what I like, what I love about the, why we push originals on center stage so much is what we want it to be about originals. Because we both love writing our own songs, and yeah. we love meeting people who write songs. But I just find the fact that like all the people we've met write about different things, mm. and they do diff- different ways, different styles. It doesn't yeah. make any difference. Like you're just writing songs. Yeah, and I think it's amazing that there is that diversity in the way people write. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting. It's mad. It's something that like I've had mates who who kind of didn't care enough to ask have, have said to me like, well, well, people I've jammed with and stuff like, how do you how do you write what you you know what do you, what's your mm, formula mm, and it's mm. like well it kind of isn't one like the main go-to might just be noodling on the guitar and you get a first line or you get something you like the sound of and you think oh, it sounds like that I could hear. for me a lot of the time it's i can hear singers that i like singing in my head if i'm yes noodling and it's like mm. okay well what do they do then mm. like as as i said like with influences and stuff we, we were talking about michael jackson and, and taylor swift it's like 
own your fucking influences. Don't shy away from it. Like if you've written something that clearly sounds like T Rex, don't say it's not meant to. Like mm. I'm not, I'm kind of not bothered about that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, always just like you. Yeah, they owned up to it all the time. Like, yeah, yeah, but and that's just, that's the thing. We know. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's the thing. When I was getting into songwriting, I was really getting into Oasis massively, and and especially Noel. And um, <laughs> he's the man. Yeah, and um, that made me cool with not bothering yeah. to to shy away from influences and actually mm, saying definitely. to people, "Oh, I've actually nixed this idea from this person, and I've done it exactly like." So there's a song. I guess getting into copyright infringement here, but um, there was a song about, be right. on Eve's record that we did. It came out in 2018 um, online and in a couple of independent shops that we check out. Of, we told them to flog. Um, kind of badgered them to flog our, our tunes, but um, <laughs> bullied them. Literally, just went in. We're like, we're in Liverpool, me and Bill, and um, the guy went to Probe Records where Pete Burns used to work, and. Uh, because he used to work there and we went in and the guy said oh yeah you uh i won't do the accent but he said <laughs> he said oh yeah you I guys you guys local and we go yeah 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 oh yeah yeah we just live up the road like, oh brilliant yeah yeah God, i'll put it in then he wrote like local art rock out of it and <laughs> just and put a little review of it and it was really cool it was like that's nice. gonna look fucking great on our instagram yeah so like, <laughs> fucking on the ground yeah man get a photo of that but um yeah, bro. on that record there's a song called let the angel sing your song which was a piece of music that i wrote Gave it to Margot, and we kind of got to a point where it wasn't just me writing the tunes. We were a little bit more collaborative as we went on, mm. and she would write over this a lyric and a, and a melody that I loved. But the chords are the same as "At My Most Beautiful" by REM. They're exactly the same. I got obsessed with that song, and it turned a little bit different. Kind of swapped uh, swapped things over, and a little bit of a change, but nothing. There's so few. You can play that over the. You can mm. sing the REM song. You can get Michael Stipe here now. I can play that and he'll think he's singing his song. Yeah. It, so. There's so few chords and shit, like, overall. Yeah, like, it's a moot it's, point. It's what you do within, yeah. within what you... I mean, like, a lot yeah. of our songs are E minor, A minor, C, F, yeah. B7 type songs. Yeah, okay. And, yeah. like, you know, punk and indie bands have been doing that since, you know, forever. I was going to say, yeah. Like, you know, E minor, B7, like, indie as fuck, man. Yeah, it's just... It's just but it's what you do with it, out, over the top yeah. of that, you know. Like, there's, it's yeah. within... Like, the structure of a song can be as basic as you want it's what you do yeah. around it well, if you look we at do lots of harmonies for example yeah. just plays the guitar so we've got shit going on within and it and you can drop it. things out you can put things yeah, in yeah of course you and, can twist and I've and got really into shit like that recently and my own songwriting there's influences like Haim and St Vincent and people like that and even the, the new kind of um, Paramore record and bits of Bowie that are like later Bowie love Bowie like really not clever but just just nuanced arrangement stuff mm. you ever seen a film called um life aquatic it's a Wes Anderson film i know but i've heard of it heard in of it there's it. this uh it's cool french uh a black dude he's just plays yeah. the uh a nylon string piece of guitar yeah and he does all these david bowie covers but like in french oh cool and like all the way through the film it's like them on a boat and he's just sitting there just chilling smoking a cigarette just playing bowing it's amazing nice. i'll check so, it out so i just remember no, yeah, I'll, so I'll, I'll youtube it oh like great film yeah. as well but i, I love okay, yeah. but um uh yeah it's just awesome it's i'll check it out man yeah you um, should but like going back to what you said about chords and stuff like you know the verse of wet sand by the chili peppers it's the same as live forever mm. it's the same yeah i mean you but could do totally a... different song totally yeah, different yeah, songs yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you could you could probably relate Wonderful. a lot of songs to other songs if you broke if you broke them down, but because they sound so differently because of other things, then mm. you know it's it's kind of difficult. But I, I love I love the fact that everybody's influenced by something. Mm. Does it? Yeah. <clears throat> in in terms of yourself, when you're writing something, obviously you've got your influences. But is mm. there anything that comes first? Is it like okay. music um... or, or melody or? Do you, is, it, is it sort of like the music then the melody or so can you sometimes do a melody it, how depends, does, how does it, on, it depends on the tune so I'm trying to think of songs that I can give examples for um, so uh, for example there's the, the song that um, actually going yeah going back to, to the Eve days um, there was a song that we, we did on the record we did um, the record was called All Personal Joys 
The song was called The Other Side. and Is it out there, sorry? It's out online, yeah. It's yeah. out online. Check all these stuff out. or anything like that? Uh, no, we never did that. I mean, we've split up now. We split up in 2019. Mm. But, um, you might need a, an afternoon check out all of our few songs because you seem to have a lot out of those. So. Yeah. yeah. Get yourself comfy. Get a cup of tea. Oh, listen to it. Yeah, do it. I'll we'll link them in the uh, description for the thing. We'll get, yeah, there's some stuff out there. But they used to us on, on like YouTube and SoundCloud, all the free things that you put things on when you were mm. 16. But sorry, I for that song, for The Other Side, which is the, the single from that, that album, we kind of, chucked out a video for it a little bit of a kind of pop art video and um i had just seen the trailer for at the time the new high flying birds album which is called who, who built the moon and it was all kind of kind of psychedelic and a bit kind of mad and there was a tune on that called it's a beautiful world that i liked the riff on it and the way it sounded it sounded to me at the time it sounded a little bit like something always might do the canadian indie pop band who are fucking brilliant and you need to listen to them um, try. got some new artists here we're in it. we should be making <laughs> notes of it they, uh, they're kind of dreamy but still a little bit gritty hmm. and I wanted to write something like that so I was messing around with this riff so that in that case that came first the guitar straight away wanted to write something yeah, that I mean, sounded specifically like another song then I got an idea for melody and, and lyrics for it and they, those things kind of came afterwards but the first thing was the guitar line that hmm. I came up with um but then for, for other ones, it, it, it literally just kind of happens like mm. all at the same time. So um, there's a song of mine that I wrote in a lockdown called Sophomores, which um, isn't out on anything, but I've played it a few times at different places and stuff. Um, and that came from music I was listening to at the time, acoustic -y, kind of everyone was mm. doing bedroom records. Everyone was <laughs> doing, you know, gigs on Zoom. Live streaming, yeah, like, yeah, yeah loads did, of it, loads of, of it, and everyone, <gasps> was, everyone was stripping stuff down. So I thought acoustic and messing around and mm. cool, and that was a little kind of riff idea. Then started singing on on top of it, and it all kind of happened at once. So that that's generally the way I tend to do it. But mm. then there's other examples where I'll just come up with lyrics because I I made myself not pick up the guitar when I was writing with the guys in Manchester. I purposely stopped playing guitar when I was writing because I wanted to write better lyrics. So what we're kind of getting really into um, the lyrics of, of Eddie Vedder and, and Bono and Michael Stipe and even some of Anthony Kiedis's more lyricy lyrics, mm. not ding dong ding dong dong dong. Because he's not, he hasn't <laughs> ring, got ding, that dong, many. Ding, ding, he hasn't ding. got that many that are about anything in particular. But when he does, it's great. Oh yeah, he's not bad. So that's the thing. Yeah, he's not bad. Like yeah. uh, Dost, like for example, Dost is that's is a wonderful, mind, yeah, wonderful piece of music. Under the Bridge is a wonderful, like yeah. wonderful written song. Yeah. But then, like, you get like the second half of every album where it's just him talking about shagging, and you're like, all right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, or getting smacked out of his or getting, face. Yeah. yeah, but the smack tight ones are yeah. interesting and like introspective. The, yeah. the sex ones are literally just yeah. suck my kiss. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. It's not. Yeah. God, it's not like. Yeah. Uh, and then, like you said, others are just complete nonsense. Yeah, man. But, but he I, does write. He is. But that's why. In love his ways right like road tripping say. as well road tripping I mean, yeah yeah watching. yeah um tangelo off the yeah, new yeah. album but one um but yeah those kind of i had a lot of those lyrics up on a on like a billboard sort of in my room and um wanted to just focus on writing better lyrics and actually taking the time mm. with them um because again i'm sort of from the Noel gallagher school of lyrics are the last thing which i'm cool with i don't care but i i do take more time now because of that mm. thought experiment of not going to the guitar so you know julian or dan the other guitar player or rory would have music ideas and i'd just think about lyrics the one mm. time where i picked the guitar up and had to just find my way into a song because it was just a little riff was was a song that we wrote together called lucy which i'm rehearsing and doing with my band at the minute um because the thing i'm doing on my own solo is was always with the aim of it becoming a band um so we've got uh so what you've been doing chatting it we were chatting in the car about this we we're going to mention it to you yeah yeah um but no to answer like, your question it, it's different every time it depends no, on the song on, we'll get there. but with lucy it was it was a lyric um a lyric approach with the guitar as a kind of afterthought because i wanted to write for the music they'd sent me hmm can you tell me what the thing is now? Because I want to know. Oh, <laughs> oh you impatient bugger. Um, <laughs> no, of course. No, so, so basically, like he's, he's now got a band. All right, okay. So I said, well, at the new venue, there <clears throat> is room for drums. Uh, there is. Because if Ramble Gamble are coming and playing drums, so I said we'd have a chat and possibly something for him to aim to. 
to come down with the full band. I didn't give a shit. As Drop Dead would be. I, don't, I didn't give a shit. Like, more That's merry, a yes man. then. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. There's, there's, there's your... Yeah, yeah, do what yeah. you need to do. I'll there's, tell them. There's your I'll thing. Tell them. See, what, see what they think. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. tell them. I'm well up for that. Yeah. So either, yeah. either the full band or just yourself. It's, yeah. Or you know, like, even if you only get half the songs done with the full band and do the rest on your own. Yeah, you well, like, to be fair, I'd seen... I went Last year, I went watching Always in Manchester and their support... I can't remember her name, but she um, did like four songs at the start, her and the electric, just and then the band came on, and then they kind of did their set, and I thought that was fucking really cool that she'd done both. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I was kind of like, okay, it's girl and the guitar, it's going to be good, but like, it, hopefully they won't all sound the same because that sometimes can happen. It's, even with people like Noel, it's like he'll sit with a kiss oh. guitar, and it's like, yeah, but after three or four it's like you know what you're getting and they're yeah. great but you know what you're getting there's very few bands that have ever existed or artists that have ever existed like the Beatles early Beatles and at least uh, uh, and Elvis they, the songs sound the same like yeah. the same vibe there's very few that like, it's like Chili's because they're just so crazy mm. um, and, but even then to a certain extent but like Radiohead are one of the few bands where you just don't know what you're going to get each song mm. yeah gig. even the gigs gig, each you, gig's a gig you just don't yeah. you just don't know what they're like um, there's very few bands like that so yeah. I don't mean especially like people on guitars on their own it, it, you have you, to work you, hard not to be samey because well, you fall into a pattern of writing songs you know but the thing is you want the song needs to be great because if it is oh, yeah, it doesn't exactly. matter yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't Precisely. matter you yeah. can do it so um, but she came out and she did she did three or four her and the guitar which was really great and then the band came on and it elevated it just that little bit and I quite liked that she got to probably without thinking about it but maybe it's the formula formulaic thing but I don't think it was they were indie as fuck so I don't think it was that thought out <laughs> but which is great but it, it was cool that we got both sides you know so it could be like that we'll, we'll see but yeah the fellas are up for it we'll, we will be there because it will yeah. be great Mint. yeah, that's yeah great. definitely that, that's great um, well obviously what we're going to do is we're going to we start what time did we say we're going to start it's like 4 o'clock so yeah Obviously, with it being a Sunday, it's it's maybe easier for a lot of people to get there a bit before. Yeah. Obviously, the earlier the better. So about three o'clock, especially if there's drums, you know, you give us time right, to sound, sound check. check because stuff, what we yeah. like to do is we like to we like to be quite slick in between artists, so there's not much time in between. Yeah, cool. So it's like one artist finished, especially if they're acoustic. We got it to a point where one artist finished, and we'd have the other one with it on within five minutes. Okay. Good. Um, yeah. But obviously, if there's a full be. band, it's a little bit more. Nuance. there'll be a little yeah. bit more a little bit more time to but yeah. you know we'll still we'll still have a quick a quick yeah. turnaround no cool um i was gonna want to talk about gigs uh is, is there any if you've got like uh like a singular like notable gig that you've uh done before like you know is there one that sticks in your mind as like mm. your favorite it doesn't have to be like yeah in fact it does have to well i don't know because of covid you probably haven't done that many so it's a bit unfair it could is be it an open forever, mic or... forever. Wembley. Forever. Oh, Wembley, <laughs> um, you wish you could. If you uh, maybe you'd done Wembley, you wouldn't be sitting here uh, talking yeah, to us. Uh, I. Uh, yeah, true. I, um... <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Invite you into my home. I, um... Bring you water. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's a. F- I'll keep it, I will keep it brief. But there's a, there's a few, I didn't believe you. There's a few, yeah. No, there's a <laughs> few, but two with, with Eve that stand out. The first one we ever played, we played it in town at a place called the Micklegate Social, and we were too young to play like after a certain amount of time. So we kind of wangled it that we could go on a little bit earlier. We kind of brought our friends down, and people, yeah, was, yeah. You know, kind of, it was this really nice communal thing. And every time we played, we had a really great community of people that came and nice. cared. And that's yeah, that yeah. kind of felt great like you know i wanted us to be like you two and stay together forever but we were always more like the smiths like dysfunctional <laughs> individual and with a committed bunch of people that liked our stuff friends friends of friends and people like that and some people like out on the internet world but um that was great because it was our first ever gig and mm. it felt to me personally like well we've kind of proved it with everyone that we sort can of do it, yeah. talked this up to that we actually can do it mm. and then the last gig we ever played was start of 2019 at a place called the spread eagle in in town which is shut down um we supported a, an american band and um it was the first gig i'd played electric and you know kind of we'd got a good set together and we had our, our own i think quite distinct sound and it just as we didn't notice when we our last gig at the time but as last gigs go like it was a good one to end on and, and it just felt like a a bit of a good looking back the right kind of send-off but as for my own stuff on my own 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I play recently, actually, at the start of the year, I played a gig and it was people, you know, general people who, who were there to, to kind of have a drink and, and watch and stuff. And then people I know from work and people like that. And it was just nice that that same community of, but of new people had come and uh, you know, friends of mine, people that I've not known for that long, but that I really care about, came and gave a shit about what I do. Felt great. So that was really nice. And the set list was um, more weighted to my own tunes and they went down well. So, yeah. which can sometimes be the gamble, you know, as you say, you promote independent music and original music, but when people just want stuff they know, it's it can be a little bit soul destroying to try and push your own stuff we mm. i'm quite militant about it now yeah, yeah we, are we are very militant we just don't care like yeah. yeah we just say no well because to me you know i'd rather do less gigs yeah. and do more and do my own stuff yeah to me at one point you know the world didn't know she loves you or fucking won the wall exactly or, you know what i mean it's like these songs were new to you at one point yep so so are mine yep do you know what i mean That's exactly how no I like we all it. say that like the, we all say you wouldn't be able to do covers if no one wrote songs in the first place. No, it's just not possible. So no. you have to. Yeah, if you want, if that's what you want to do, do it. Like I don't care. People are always like, oh yeah, but you, you guys covers are great, and you could like earn all this money, Mike. Like, yeah, but we're, like we don't want to do that. I think we yeah. don't want to do yeah. it. Like yeah. yeah, we could, but we don't want to. We only want to do our own yeah. songs. We'll yeah. stick a few in that are cool. We do a cover of um, "Breathe," uh, "Breathe" by Prodigy. Yeah, and no one does that song, and it's fucking mint we love playing it it's yeah. really fast we yeah. jump about and we sing really loudly and we have fun and it's great to do and we do that and we do some other stuff as well but like mainly like we're like almost always just do our own stuff we have been asked once or twice before oh can you do some more covers and we're just like nope. no i think i think <laughs> we were asked one time no. to do something like 60 40 in favor of uh, covers so we just went yeah all right then but then we're just like 70 30. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sorry, 70 30 in favor of originals. Yeah, you no, know. totally, man. Totally. So we're just, so we were just yeah. prepared to turn up and just go, but, but, but then at the same time, it. it can be soul destroying. Like, to, when you've got people <laughs> like just yeah. going, bah, bah, fucking. But I don't mind that. I, I kind of have a bit of fun with that. I, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, you got I don't mind that. I, you know, was playing last night at, um, somewhere in town and had planned to do, you know, three of my own tunes. And because the per it was an open mic and the person who'd been on before me had done crowd punches and they were good and people liked them, I thought because it's that sort of crowd and it's busy and why not because it's that sort of crowd, it's funny seeing drunk people sing. Yeah, true, it is. I thought, okay, well, I'll do like I'll do an Oasis song instead of that last one on my own because this lot will get off on it and at least I've done two of my own. Why not? It's no skin off my nose. But by the time I got round to doing tune it got to that point in the night where people were going to other bars people liked my own stuff and were cool and it was great but then by the time you get to the song that, that you're thinking okay this is where you're going to sing now all the fucking people that were singing mm -hmm. are gone mm -hmm. it's like I'm just like there like uh, David Brent yeah, thanks for the fucking <laughs> support like you know yeah. but I don't mind it if you know if people are shouting out for stuff I kind of got the set in front of me and I kind of go okay and go, oh, can we have a you know, brown eyed girl and it's like I am playing the songs here, yeah, down here, the, songs, yeah. the 15 songs here. <laughs> There's no brown eyed girl on there. No. You might get under the bridge, but you, nah, it's like, if you want that, so listen to, listen to no, Van Morrison. No, fair play, like, I, I, I applaud that because I think it should uh, stick to your guns and do what the fuck you want to do. Like, music's but, music. But last year I did gigs and, and weighed in towards covers because, you know, it's, it depends where you play as yeah, well. Yeah, You've yeah. got to know your environment, you know. I kind of even so much as what guitar to bring like i've kind of started playing fundamentally on on, a, on a electric just mm. because i kind of want to do that you know but then last night i thought yeah it's the kind of environment that would do better on acoustic though and and it's I good wanna to be uh flexible what you do as know well. what to do and what to showcase and mm. and one of the people that, that i think i probably got that from is, is again probably noel because it's like last year he did a thing with a bunch of other artists celebrating peter blake's 90th and Weller was there, and the Who were there, and the Who come out and do their big Who set, and and all that, and it's great. But Noel can come out and do acoustic tunes, oh, yeah, yeah. and they go down well, and obviously because they're great songs. But like that Albert Hall environment, it's I think it suits that better. So he's not coming out with a full band and doing all the new stuff. 
he's coming out and doing acoustic versions mm. of Stand By Me and Live Forever and it's like why not you there's, know? A, um, there's a pub we have often playing uh, at Galway and uh, uh, one time I filled in on my own I, when I play on my own I do like and largely covers yeah I do because I, I write all the time and I write too many songs for us to learn as a band so I've got yeah. a bunch of songs I'm working on now so because you know I'm the main writer of the band you know he, he gets a couple but like <laughs> I, yeah I do uh, uh, it's hit as I'm much to admit just that, that songs that, about that sheep. Is, that is very true, but you know, except for our best song, yeah, like, do, it really annoys. Do. It really annoys me when people are like, "Oh, I love that sheep song." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it gets proper triggered. Like it's looking great, <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, but when I get to do that, like I do, like so, I, I, the first set I did, like basically, so a few of the songs I can do on my own because most of them I kind of need them along. Yeah, but a few of those did a few new ones. But the second set I did all like 50s and 60s stuff because there's old people in the pub. Yeah, and like they, I, I, I don't not? mind doing it then, but like when when we're together doing what we do, mm. I just want to do what we do. Yeah, know? but it makes sense. I mean, you know, personally speaking, of of my own stuff, if I'm at home and messing around on the, on the guitar, not really thinking about what I'm doing, I, I'll kind of remember a song I've written a while ago and mm. and come back to it, find it on my phone and find the demo or whatever and. Uh, Revisit it, learn it, kind of learn my way around it again. And we'll, I kind of did it the other night, wrote out five songs I don't play a lot of my own and tried them acoustic. And I thought, yeah, okay, I, I need to remember that I've got these because they would suit certain environments better than coming out and mm. doing the indie disco stuff on the electric, mm. which yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is what I'm doing now, what I love, but not necessarily the right thing for certain places. It's good that you've got the, uh, the ability to, uh, to do that. Right, let's uh, wrap socks. I was go, just about been, to say, we've been yeah, going to say a thing. We're, so we're, we're going to have to wrap it up in a minute, but there's one more question. There is, but I don't really think it's going to be. I, I reckon I could probably guess who the person is going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I reckon, reckon I could so. as well. So we always ask like everyone, well, uh, we, uh, we're basically, if you are on a desert island all yeah. the time. I saw you ask this to somebody. Yeah, and you, and you could be. What's the question, though? Go on. The question. No, you know what the question is. You know. You just, you just butted it in. Like I was asking, I was asking the question. And you're like, yeah, no. You've ruined the moment. The, go on, the so question I, is, like if you want to just hang on, me finish. Like back at school. Yeah. Go on, go on, go on. I've never talked to a little on a podcast before. I'm getting annoyed. Uh, um, if you, if you're on a desert island forever with any musician, dead or alive, yeah. who would it be? I think we know. And why? Yeah, yeah, and why? why? But we think. Yeah. I, I think. I would imagine. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I, but I'm, he might. He's going he to surprise. surprise. Yeah, he's yeah. going to. No, I. I probably go Johnny Marr. Oh, so yeah, he runs, and and I got into running because he talks about it a lot in his interviews. And it was when I'd left my high school band, I got into running, listening to his interviews, that inspired the solo thing I that is now a band called Drop Dead McPhee. That's Drop Dead McPhee. Check yes, out, check YouTube, him out. Um, well. Hopefully, Facebook. have something across the bottom. So that yeah. stuff started by running a lot and having getting into the chili peppers and stuff like that and listening to loads of johnny's interviews and it really inspired me to like carry on writing and i ended up writing loads and loads of stuff and um you know so probably johnny Marr because i feel like he'd make me better at what i do he'd make what i do sound better and um he's got fucking great hair so that would be that would be good um like rub our heads together and create a new person. Nice. Cracking, so, um, yeah, it. probably Johnny Marr. Johnny Marr or Flea, I think. Johnny Marr Flea, 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 Flea would be insane. Insane, yeah. Flea yeah. Would be fun. Uh, but, um, or Dave Grohl, but Johnny Marr. So, the person you've talked about, basically, your podcast, you don't want to spend a lot of time with. <laughs> Which one, Noel or Bono? Bono. <laughs> Bono. <laughs> um, we both, we both Bono, just went. Yeah. He didn't know the shit out of me. Like, I, a... I would like it, but I feel like it, he needs maybe edge to balance him out yeah, maybe, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. i like i like how thoughtful you're about that yeah i think so i like the fact that no one's everyone else has tried to justify it with a either lovey-dovey thing or music and you're just like running yeah yeah yeah. no yeah. totally like totally it. well I like, I, like, I like the i like the thought pattern of staying healthy because you need to yeah you need well, to, I can't, to keep the mind yeah, sharp man, you know? I, I personally do what i do best if i'm healthy if i'm not drinking if i'm not yeah, staying yeah, up late yeah, 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 yeah. and if i'm looking after myself and i think probably because I got into doing my thing I'm doing now um, through that, through getting well and getting healthy and stuff and looking after myself, that it maybe the two aren't mutually exclusive. Definitely not. You know? um, but just before we wrap, we need to shout out the people that I'm in the band with, really, because I said I would. Shout out, shout out so so we've got Jack on the guitar. Hi, Jack. We've got uh, Chris on the drums. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. 
and we've got Finley on the bass. Hi, Finley. Um, I play guitar and sing, and Hi, yeah, Alan. Drop Dead McPhee. Um, it started as a solo thing, yeah, a la Dave Grohl, Foo Fighters' first album, yeah, and then became. I always wanted it to become a band, and and now it kind of is, and we're we're rehearsing and doing our thing, and great, can't wait to see you. Yeah, we um we we'll we'll be around. There's, there's your challenge. Yeah. There's your challenge. Dro- drop, for dead, stage, drop Dead McPhee can happen to anyone. <laughs> there you and go. Will. Uh, that'll do. Turn the podcast. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Cheers, Bye.